I mean, what's to say? It's, it's really quite emotional. <laughs> I mean, whiskey's fascinating, full stop. Mash bills, and especially Irish whiskey mash bills. You know, mash bill culture is so fascinating where it does exist. You look at bourbon, you look at rye, you look at the conversations different grains have with each other. The fact that you're ripping flavors out of different plants and having them talk together is already peculiar and strange and wonderful. But when you look at Irish whiskey mash bills, the fact that they're all gone, that, you know, Irish whiskey held on by a thread. And a lot of people know this as industrial history. They know that all the distilleries collapsed, but it always comes as a shock when you tell people that all these distilleries were making very different things through very different periods of time, that these are fundamentally different drinks and they smell different and they taste different. And these smells and these tastes come down among many other factors to this essential difference of what grains are you fermenting and then boiling off into the whiskey itself. And every aspect of Irish social history, Irish political history, Irish agricultural history has warped the taste of a different era. I mean, it's the history of Irish bread gone wrong. It's the history of Irish agriculture through, through a glass darkly. And it's so fascinating to be able to touch that, you know, I've spent two years going through archives, looking for lost recipes, looking for lost trends, looking for lost house practices, changing house practices, everything. But when you see it as liquid, when, more importantly, when you smell it as liquid, it is so much more visceral, you know? And I think looking at new distilleries like Boan coming in at this point of revival when Ireland lost so much, History means something very different to Irish whiskey than it does for other forms of whiskey, such as Scotch, that have an unbroken connection with the past. When you look at how much Ireland lost, when we're talking about Irish whiskey mash bills, when we read pages where you have leading Irish distillers quibbling over the percentage of oats, and you wonder what, what logic were they even going off of? What, what does any of this mean? It's like walking into a big, empty house and seeing a lot of old furniture that you know isn't made anymore and wondering you know why did people like this stuff it's so chilling and so fascinating and you look at grains like wheat or like rye that exist in the American tradition they exist through a kind of again a, a funhouse mirror in combinations with maize with things that we didn't do and you wonder well what do they do with malt what do they do with raw barley and then you look at something like oats oats was Ireland's second grain after raw barley. And it used to come in huge percentages. And it's vanished in the 1970s, it fell off the map. So when we see old bottles, you know, a lot of whiskey societies in Ireland like to pour old stuff. And when you try stuff from the 50s, most of it, certainly the majority of it has oats in it. But we don't know, a lot of people tasting it don't know. And we certainly don't know the breakdowns. And it was fascinating for me to find not only those breakdowns, but the stuff we can't taste, the stuff from genuinely very long ago. And you're looking at, you know, okay, if whiskey from the 50s tasted different, what does whiskey from the Napoleonic era taste like? What does whiskey before the Act of Union taste like? What is this drink? And we tend to think of whiskey, we tend to sell whiskey as the root of its history. You know, this is an ancient Irish tradition. And actually, what we're drinking most of the time is the end point of that history. It's the final and most recent incarnation of whiskey. It's not the history of whiskey's evolution. Whiskey has been many very different things to very different people in very different agricultural realities, political realities, public taste, distilling practices, everything in between. It's so fascinating to find that history, to see how things like the repeal of the corn laws or the introduction of the potato led to the reduction of one grain or another, how fermentation times changed, how the industry evolved to have tastes in the first place, how those tastes changed, how they disappeared, and then eventually how the industry fell apart at the base and so much was lost to the point where we have this empty house to walk into and we're wondering, what does any of this actually mean? Why would you stand up in front of a court judge and say, their whiskey doesn't have enough oats? And to be here now at this stage with the help of Boan and the help of their resources and the help of their staff, to be able to turn that theoretical research into liquid, to be able to smell what Waterside Distillery or any of these lost distilleries of Ireland 
actually produced, what they smelt like, what they tasted like. Now we're doing it with different stills in modern facilities. We're talking to ghosts, really. You know, we're, we're making different whiskey the same way and hoping with no surviving evidence that we're, we're looking back at them because there's no them to look back at us now. And I think a lot of people don't realize that about Irish whiskey history and about Irish whiskey as an industry, that it is both the oldest whiskey on the planet and yet has such a tenuous, such a tragic relationship with its own past and that it is now in a kind of a babes in the wood type scenario, except you're, you're more like babes in the sequoias where you have very old trees and very new distillers looking up at them and wondering, you know, what, what do we do here? And as historical as these mashes are, in the terms of its revival, what we're doing here is, is the beginning of the story, you know, rather than the end.